In this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate Google Home with Home Assistant so that you can use your Google Home speakers to control all of your Home Assistant devices. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. A couple of weeks ago, we did the integration with Home Assistant and I asked in that video if any of you guys would be interested in seeing the Google Home version and apparently a lot of you wanted to see that so here we are that's what we're going to cover today. What we're doing today is integrating Google Assistant or Google Home with Home Assistant and that will allow you to use your voice or use your Google Home speakers to control all of your Home Assistant devices and it's quite useful for being able to add devices that aren't necessarily Google Home compatible. You can use Home Assistant to sort of bridge that gap and make them compatible with your Google Home speakers. The method we're covering today is once again totally free but it does require just a little bit of work but I would say it's much easier than the integration, it'll probably take you much less time. However, if you don't want to go through the hassle of doing this, um, you can use a Nabu Casa subscription, which costs $5 per month, and that will directly support the Home Assistant um, project. So if you do want to go that way, it's a much easier route. And again, once again, it does support the developers of Home Assistant, which is always a good thing. So I would recommend that if you're not comfortable with the steps we're doing. Having said that, the one thing you will need to do is you'll need to have your Home Assistant available externally over HTTPS. So you'll need to be able to connect to your Home Assistant instance from outside of your house. You'll need to have that set up already using DuckDNS or Cloudflare or some other service. With that said, let's waste no more time and just jump straight into the guide. Oh, and I'll do my very best not to trigger your Google Assistants during this video. My God, you guys got mad <laughs> from that video. Okay, so the first step you're going to need to do is to go over to console.actions.google.com and make sure you're signed in with the same email address that's linked to your Google Home or Google Home speaker. Next, create a new project and then give that project a name. So we're just going to call this um, ESH Home Assistant. Set your um, country and your language. So I'm going to choose the UK and click on create project. Then from there, choose the smart home project and click on start building. And this will take a few minutes just for that process to go through. Once that's done, you'll land at the over page for your new project. And the first thing we're going to do is to name the smart home action. So click on the name smart home action and then give this a name. And this is how it's actually going to appear later on in the Google Home app. So you can just give it a descriptive name so you remember what it's for. So we're going to call this yes, H Home Assistant and click on the save button in the top right. Let that save and then from there, go to actions. The only thing we need to do here is to enter the fulfillment URL. And that's gonna be the URL for your Home Assistant instance and then it's gonna have slash API slash Google Assistant at the end. So I'll go ahead and enter my Home Assistant URL and make sure to enter the port um, that you're using for Home Assistant if you're using port 8123. If you're using port 443, then no need to enter that. So I've entered my Home Assistant URL and then I enter slash API slash Google underscore assistant. Click on the save button and leave the other options um, just blank or default. Click on the save button in the top right. So once that's saved, head over to account linking. And then we need to enter our OAuth client details. So in the client ID, we enter HTTPS oauth dash redirect dot google user content dot com slash r slash and then at the end we enter our project id and to get the project id you can get it simply from the url up here so i'm going to highlight this bit so after slash project you'll have your project id so i'm going to copy that and paste that into the end of the client ID. So it should look like something like that once it's finished. In the client secret, we can just enter anything. It's not used by Home Assistant. And then in the authorization URL, we are going to enter the IP address or the, sorry, the URL of our Home Assistant instance once again, followed by the port, followed by slash auth slash authorize. So enter the URL of your Home Assistant instance and the port number, followed by slash auth slash authorize. 
And then in the token URL, we again enter the URL of our Home Assistant instance, followed by the port number, so 8123 in my instance, followed by slash auth slash token. Click on the next button after that and then click on next again. We don't need to tick those boxes. And then in the scopes, we enter email and then click on add scope and click on name or enter name and then click on add scope once again. Then click on next. Do not tick this box. We want to leave that blank. Click on next and then click on save to finish. Once saved, we then need to head up to the test button and that is at the top right hand corner. And this does take just a couple of seconds to run through. And so that is great. Once we are at this page, we are getting on well. In another tab, open up console.cloud.google.com and then we're gonna need to create some credentials for Home Assistant to use to speak to our app. So you'll land at this page and then you're gonna need to select a project in the top left and then in the projects that open, you'll see the project that you just created. So esh-home-assistant is the project that I just created in the last step. So click on that. And that takes us into our newly created project. From there, we're going to click on the menu. So that's in the top left. If you don't see it, click on the little hamburger in the top left. Click on APIs and services and go down to the credentials. And we're gonna to need to create a new service account credential and that will allow us to use that with Home Assistant. In the, so the once the credentials page has load, loaded in the top um, left-hand corner, you're gonna create click on create credentials and then choose a service account. In the service account name, we can just give this a name of anything we want. So I'm just gonna call this Home Assistant and that's gonna create a ID here and you can give that a description if you want. Click on the create button and then in the dropdown, choose, click on the dropdown and scroll down to the service account um, menu. And then in the sub menu, choose the service account token creator. Click on continue. and then click on done to create that um, credentials. And so you'll see at, down at the bottom, we now have our Home Assistant service account created. What you're gonna need to do is to click on the pencil to edit, and then we are gonna download or create a new key. So go down to the add key, and then create a new key. Make sure to have the JSON format um, selected and click on create, and then that is gonna, and that is gonna start a download of a file and that is gonna download a JSON file to your machine. So just go ahead and save that file. Click on the close button and then click on the save button. Before we leave this page, we're gonna go up to the search bar and then search for the home graph. Click on the home graph API and then on the next screen that loads, we're gonna enable the Home Graph API. Click on Enable. And then once the Home Graph API is enabled, we can then head over to our Home Assistant um, configuration file. Okay, so in your Home Assistant configuration, we need to add just a couple of lines into it to make the Google Assistant integration work. So on a new line, enter Google underscore Assistant. And then on the next line, we're gonna enter a project ID. And remember that project ID is the one that we copied from the URL earlier. So if you head back to your Google console, and then you can grab the ID from the URL up here. So copy that, and then head back to the Home Assistant configuration and paste that value in. On the next line, we're gonna add a service account. And then we're gonna include the JSON file that we downloaded earlier. So enter an exclamation mark, include, and then enter service underscore account dot JSON. On the next line down, enter report underscore state true. And that's gonna um, report the state of all of our sensors back to the Google Home app. 
Finally, we just need to create a service account file that we just included. So this service account.json file, and that's gonna have the contents of that key that we just downloaded a couple of minutes ago. So go ahead and create a new file. We're gonna call this service underscore account.json, just like we have um, named it in the configuration file. Hit enter. And then if you head to the download location of that service account JSON file and just open up that key file that we just downloaded in Notepad, it looks a little bit like this. And we're gonna copy the contents of that file and paste it into our um, newly created JSON file. And that is essentially everything we need to do. Now we just head over and restart the home system configuration. Click on service controls, make sure to check your config as always. And when you get a configuration valid, make sure to restart your home assistant instance. So once home assistant has reloaded, you're gonna to need to pull out your phone and go over to the Google Home app. And then you'll notice I have just three devices on my screen at the moment or in my Google Home app. Click on the plus button in the top left and click on setup device. Then choose the works with Google option. Then in the search bar, we're gonna search for ESH or whatever the name of your project was that you named it earlier. And you'll notice I have two here, but that's just from testing um, for this video. So I'm gonna choose the, um, the bottom option there. You should only have one option on your one. And then it's gonna pop up and ask for our username and password for our home assistant instance. So go ahead and enter your credentials. And that is gonna link our um, home assistant to Google Assistant. And that is pretty much everything you need to do. Now it's just popped up and asked me to assign devices to room. So it's actually pulled through all of my devices instantly. So you can go ahead and, um, so you'll see I have a large amount of devices there, um, all pulled through and you can assign them to rooms if you wish. And then click on the done button. Um, and that is pretty much all we need to know. If we head back to the home screen, you'll see that I now have all of my devices listed in the Google Home app. And you're now free to go through and of course, assign your devices to areas, set up your routines or anything like that, or just use your voice with your Google Assistant. Another thing you can now do is to say, sync my devices. Sure, syncing devices for Esh Home Assistant. So there we go, that is now, um, and you can say that to just, if you add new devices to Home Assistant, just issue the sync devices command and that'll pull, pull through any new devices automatically straight into the Google Assistant app. And there we go, you should now have all of your Home Assistant devices in your Google Home app and you should be able to control them using your, using? use your Google Home speakers to control all of your Home Assistant devices. If you've watched the video all the way through and you're still struggling or you're not quite sure what to do, you can always join our Discord server. We have a wonderful community and you'll find the links in the description and myself or somebody else will try to help you if you're still having issues. But that's about all the time we have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Are you using the Google Home integration? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what other videos you want to see in the future also, and I'll do my best to make them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, drop it a like if you liked it, hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next video. Pew.